Hi everybody, I'm Randy Dean, the Totally Obsessed Time and Tech Management Guy and Email Sanity Expert and author of the recent Amazon email bestseller, Taming the Email Beast. I'd like to do one of my little video tips today, and today's video tip is going to be uh, a little bit more about the key features, uh, key views, and key strategies of using the task function inside of Microsoft Outlook, which I personally consider both one of the strongest and most powerful tools inside of Microsoft Outlook, but yet at the same time also one of the least used tools because so few people have figured out how to actually use it. So let's go ahead and dive right in and show you some of the reasons why I believe this is such a powerful tool. Um, let's jump in and we're going to go into my Microsoft Outlook and here is my task view. And as you can see, this is a super handy way to be able to manage your day, manage your projects, manage your people, manage your tasks. This is Outlook 2010, and this is one of my favorite things about new Outlook 2010. It's called the Today View. And the reason I like it so much is just take a look at the screen right here. What I have for today is a very thorough listing of my high priority, followed by my mid priority, followed by my low priority tasks for today. Not only do I have my high to mid to low tasks for today, I also can see over here the status on these tasks, which as you see, most of these ones are not started, but I have a couple that are that people are waiting on uh, items. And the last column is actually where I have the categories. And I want to show you this a little bit. I have one down here that uh, does not have categories. Let me open up this task right here. And I'm going to pop that open just by double clicking on it. If you look inside of your task function outlook, you now have the ability, starting in about Outlook 2007, to create color-coded categories that you can use not just in the task function in Outlook, but also in tasks, um, in uh, calendar, in contacts, in notes, and even your email. And here's the thing that's really interesting about this. Not only can you create and use these categories, now what you can do is effectively cross-reference, cross-categorize items into several different buckets. For instance, this one right here is a client prospect activity. This one is a marketing PR activity. And it's related to one of the people I work with named Marsha. So notice that I put it in the main project folder, the sub project folder, and the person folder that it's related to, thus allowing me to be able to cross-reference items in this particular task. And now, if I hit Save and Close, you'll notice that now those cross categorizations are clearly shown here on the screen for that task. And so as you can see, most of these that are in here are basically set up so that I can have them touching the project, the sub project, the client, the vendor, the customer, the coworker, uh, the person that they're related to. And if I pop back in, let's, let's jump into this one, mow lawn and trim. Here's the thing I wanted to show you about this. These categories that I mentioned are available in all five of the major functions in Outlook to add and or rename the existing functions that you have there, you just come down here to the All Categories tab. Now, most people, when they open this up, they'll have red category, green category, blue category, purple category, which usually means nothing. So what I encourage you to do is click on these, hit the Rename button, and turn them into something that matters to you. Key projects, key sub-projects, key clients, key vendors, key coworkers, maybe even a little bit of personal. Notice I have a household list in here, as well as husband, father. So I can even put a little work-life balance and program that right into my task management tool. So I'm going to cancel out of here. Here's one of the other things that's nice about doing it this way. If you have all of these items cross-categorized, look at this. You can pop up here to the top where it says Current View. Click on the drop-down, and you can actually then sort your entire task list by category. And look what happens when you do that. When you sort it by category, it's going to take all of these tasks that you've built in and put them into the bucket that they are related to. Uh, for instance, right here is my timely tips category for my e-newsletter. That's what I'm sort of building this video tip for. And now I can see all of the tasks that I have related to my timely tips. And you can see sort of how that breaks down. It allows me to effectively see all the things that I have targeted for my timely tips. Now, I have several in here that have no due date. What those are are ideas of things I could cover in a later timely tips, but I don't have a formal time when I need to get them done. They're just ideas. These ones down here at the bottom of this list, which do have formal due dates, mean that I'm actually planning and committing to get them done. So not only can I see the task list by the Today View, which lets me see today's tasks across all of my key projects, client vendors, 
et cetera, for today. I can also go in and build individual task lists for individual projects, sub-projects, clients, customers, vendors, coworkers, et cetera. So it gives me the ability to sort of see that task list two different ways. Now that's pretty cool. Let me show you another thing that's pretty cool inside of here. Let's come in here and come to the completed view and take a look what this does. Now this is sort of interesting. My Outlook's got a little bug in it. As you can see, what it does is, um, when it's working properly, <laughs> which unfortunately, it seems like every other time I open it up, it does this. Uh, when it's working properly, it'll put in a date stamp on date completed telling you exactly when you mark that thing done. So uh, I'm sure you can see some real value from that capability. By having that date stamping in there, you can basically track every single task you get done and then mark it complete, don't hit delete. Remember this when you're using Outlook tasks. If you get something done, don't delete, mark complete, because then that date stamp will show up here in the completed task view, which will allow you to come back for later reference, which is obviously really good if you want to look back two, three, four months to see what you were working on, as well as if you, know, you had that client last week that said you didn't get them what you needed, but you have it in your record that you did. You can actually use this as a good, um, excuse the term, CYA tool. And for those of you that work in industries where you have to track billable hours, this could be a remarkably valuable view right here because what you could do, let's say you're working in the accounting or legal or um, you know, uh, possibly any other field uh, where marketing advertising, where you have to track your time and, uh, and allot it to specific clients or projects, every time you get a task done, you could put in the subject line what the task is, what project or client it's related to, and how much time it took, and then mark it complete. And at the end of any billing period, you could come into this view right here and use this as a way to track your billable hours to make an easy and quick report. So that's pretty handy. Now, those of you that happen to be in Outlook 2007 or earlier, remember, my favorite view is the Today view, but this view is new to Outlook 2010. So if you're in Outlook 2007 or earlier, you have to use the Active view, and then inside of the Active view, we'll see if my Outlook lets me do this, you have to page way down to, you have to page down in to find today's date. And once you have the opportunity to do that inside of today's date, it will allow you to basically use the same basic view. This view right here is inside of the active view. You just have to page down to the date to be able to find it. But let me show you one other cool thing that's nice about the today view uh, for those of you that are interested in using this as a way to manage your day. Notice that I can take a, a task in here and actually drag it up to make it higher, as well as take another task and move it down to make it lower. And if I do this properly, it'll allow me to basically set up and build my task list in a priority order for that day. So I can see exactly what it is that I need to work on and when I need to work on it. And here's the thing, got too much going on? Have, just can't get it all done that day? Watch this. You can sick, simply click on any one of these and just click right on that column. Now, how I did that again, let me show you this. Click right here jump over to there, move the date. And so that allows me, this is what I'm trying to coach people to do in my live programs. At the start of every day, what if you did this instead of jump, jumping right into your email? What if you did this instead? Look at your calendar one to two weeks in advance, see what's coming, look to see if there's any tasks you need to start working on per what you see on your calendar. Look at today's calendar. How much time is open? How much time is already blocked for other commitments and meetings? Look at that open available time, then look at this today view right here and ask yourself, can I really get this all done today or not? And if you can't get it all done today, take a couple items and move them to a later date to make today's task list much more reasonable. And by doing this little behavior, it will give you the opportunity to, uh, in essence, allow yourself to have some structure, some strategy, and um, a little bit of foresight, foresight when it comes to how to plan your day versus just coming in, jumping into your email and getting distracted by whatever the next crisis du jour is. So hopefully you can see the way that some of these views work. I strongly encourage you to get inside of this task list and utilize it to a higher level. I'll probably do another follow-up tip in the future where, I show, where I'll show how you can track the things that people owe to you using the task list and Outlook as well as how to set up and manage recurring tasks things that happen again and again and again using the task function in Outlook. So thank you for your time today. Um, as I said, this is basically just a small part of the kind of information that I share in my longer form uh, full program that I deliver at live client events, conferences, and company workshops, as well as in streaming webinar formats for many clients and sometimes publicly. 
I've even taken a couple um, programs. One is my 90 plus minute optimizing your Outlook program, and the other one is 100 plus minutes on taming the email beast using Outlook and Gmail. And if you're interested, you can actually visit my page out here on Biz Yeti. Uh, it's uh, bizyeti.com, and you can actually go out, visit that page, and get more information about how to get a full full webinar replay in streaming format, how to purchase that and make that available so you can fully train yourself. Here are some of the other programs that I lead um, and information right here. And here's some places where you can uh, check in with me on social as well as possibly subscribe to my monthly e-newsletter. And with that, I'm going to say thank you for your time and attention today. Uh, look forward to hopefully seeing you out on the road sometime.